Hey all, um, welcome to uh, notes video E, Related Rates Notation Practice. Let's go ahead and label the title of this worksheet notes. So now we know where to file it when we're done. Alright, the topic of this lesson is for us to become familiar with translating uh, phrases or equations into math symbols and then also using the skill of implicit differentiation. Um, we're preparing to solve related rate problems in the coming days and in order for us to solve those application problems we're going to need to know some various skills to help us do that. So I just thought it'd be best if we kind of took the skills outside of the application problems um, and focused on those for a day and then we can put it all together. So this topic is um, just about us getting ready to solve those application problems. Okay, so on your notes here you see that the directions are translate using proper calculus notation. The area of a circle is increasing at a rate of 6 square inches per minute. So for us to translate that into calculus notation, okay, we want to look at um, what's going on here. The area is increasing at a rate. So we don't want to just use the variable A for area of a circle. We want to use notation that represents, correctly represents, a rate of change of area. So for us to translate, when we're talking about area and it's changing over time, we're going to use the notation dA dt, a rate of change of area with respect to time. So we have d over dt with the a here. Well, the rate of change of this area with respect to time is equal to 6 square inches per minute. So it looks like it's increasing, so that would be a positive number, so we're going to use 6. And then indicate units of measure, square inches per minute. So in the coming days when we do begin to solve application problems, we are going to have to take the word problem and translate uh, various uh, phrases into uh, notation, and this would be one way to do it. Number two, the volume of a cone is decreasing at a rate of. So we're going to stop right there. We're going to think about the variable that represents volume. That would be V. Okay, and we're talking about a rate of change. So with respect to time, so we're going to say that dV dt is equal to. Now notice that the volume is decreasing at a rate of. So the correct notation would be negative 2 cubic feet per second. So indicating units of measure, cubic feet per second. All right, number three, the population of Tyler is growing at a rate of, so over here, a rate of change over time. So d over dt. Okay, well what variable can we, we use to represent population? That's certainly your choice. I'm just going to go ahead and use the uppercase P. So this notation represents the idea that our population is changing over time. It's equal to 3, and we'll put people per day. So This might be a good place to pause the video, answer the, these next two questions, and then uh, uh, go ahead and restart the video and, and kind of do a self-check and see how you're doing here. Okay, so hopefully you've uh, went ahead and attempted them and you've seen how you've done and we're on the right track so we can move forward. Um, I decided to use the variable H for the height of the tree. Um, I probably wouldn't use T here for tree, tree just because it's a rate of change with respect to time. That might be a little confusing to have DT over DT. Okay, and this is a half foot per year. Uh, I decided on this problem right here to use W for the water level. Uh, you could have used L. It's certainly up to you uh, unless you're specifically told what variable to use. Okay. All right, let's look at this next group of problems. Here I just wanted to give you an opportunity to take the notation, the calculus notation, and translate it into an expression that might represent it based upon the context of this notation. So we'll look at one of them here. Okay, DC DT. I would have preferred to have a stacked fraction, but I couldn't here with the software I was using. But 
a rate of change of c, whatever c may represent, with respect to time is equal to a positive 2 inches per day. Well, I mean, just making up something here, trying to be creative, uh, we might say um, the circumference of a pizza is increasing at a rate of 2 inches per day. I want to tie in the word increasing for the positive. And I do want to say at a rate of. So the rate of change of the circumference of a pizza is increasing at a rate of, this is a rate representation, at a rate of 2 inches per day. Well, that'd be nice. Okay. So what I'd like for you guys to do is, is take some time and fill in, be as creative as possible, and fill in what you can on 7 through 10. Um, you know, with the S here, um, connecting it over here to the units, square yards, I'm thinking surface area uh, would be a good um, you know, interpretation of this notation. Um, here we have area, perhaps again, the area of what, okay, uh, is, in, is decreasing at a rate of negative 4 feet squared per second. So try and think of something that might fit this description. Um, here we have just simple DRDT. Um, you just make up something looking at the units here, centimeters per minute. Well, then what could R represent? that would make sense. Uh, and then here again we have uppercase V which typically represents volume and the units of measure here, the cubic meters, kind of goes along with volume. So if you want to kind of think of something creative and then we'll share those next time we meet. Okay, now that we've looked at the translation topic, it's time to look at more of a mechanical skill. For each of the following problems, find the derivative with respect to time. So we're differentiating with respect to t. Okay. In the application problems that we're going to be um, looking at uh, in the coming days, uh, we're going to read a word problem and in the word problem in context we're going to be able to associate some type of equation that's fitting um, in that problem. So once we identify the equation that we're dealing with, um, it's going to become necessary for us to differentiate that equation with respect to time. So just looking at that skill outside of the context of those application problems, let's start with number 11. All right, so it looks like your um, area form the first circle, pi, which is a constant, r squared. So come over here and to the left of the blank, we don't want to start our work right underneath here because we're losing too much space. Okay, let's go ahead and bring in the derivative operator. What we're doing is finding the derivative with respect to time. So bring in d over dt. I could bring that derivative operator um, onto both sides of the equation, but I'm just going to enclose the equation I'm working with in brackets and uh, go from there. Okay, so here we go. If we're going to find the rate of change of area with respect to time, this is our implicit differentiation um, skill. So that becomes dA dt. Or if we wanted to, we could call it A prime. The problem with A prime is it's not very visual as to what you're differentiating with respect to. There's no other variable there, there other than to say A prime, unless you said A prime and in parentheses put T. But dA over dT um, certainly satisfies um, that derivative. Okay, looking at um, this equation right here, this expression right here, looking at the structure of it, this is when all our differentiation rules have to kind of come to, to mind. We have a constant multiplier, pi being the constant, on r squared, one variable. So to find this derivative with respect to time, okay, I'm going to kind of use the constant multiplier rule, pull that outside of my problem, and then I'm going to differentiate with respect to time the r squared. Okay, well, returning over here to some work that we have to do because this operator tells us we have more work to do. Okay, I'm going to have pi times, 
Well, focusing our attention on this part of the problem here, notice the variables disagree. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to proceed by just actually finding the derivative using the power rule of r squared. Easy enough, 2r. But we're not done. The inside function, if you will, is the variable r, which disagrees with t, so it's the derivative of the outside, 2r, times the derivative of the inside with respect to time, which happens to be r. So this is our um, rate of change, our related rate equation, if you will. Okay, We have um, two rates, a rate of change of area uh, and a rate of change of radius. And that makes sense because if we're dealing with some kind of application problems, and let's say that the circle itself is increasing, well, we know that the radius would be increasing, uh, the circumference would be increasing, the area would be increasing, um, just different dimensions of the um, item would be changing. <clears throat> so we have a relationship between uh, a rate of change of area and a rate of change of radius. So the change of the area with respect to time is related to the change in the radius with respect to time by this equation. So I'm just doing a little cleanup here. Uh, common practice just has us write it this way. Okay. So the blank's just there to kind of help me keep the paper organized, but if you want to just box that right there as opposed to rewriting it up here, that's absolutely fine. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number 12. We'll do a few of these, and the ones that we don't do the next time we meet in class, that will be um, the focus, the objective for us to complete it. So right now we're just going to do a few. All right, let's look at 12. Notice this volume equation. It happens to be a volume equation for a cylinder. Pi is your constant. And then we have that the volume is equal to pi times the radius squared times the height of the cylinder. So what's important to notice is that we have two different variables here that are being multiplied. So just kind of getting a plan in mind, when we do go to differentiate this with respect to time, since we have a product of two variables, um, we're going to have to use the product rule. So coming back over here. bringing in the derivative operator, and then applying. dV dt, the rate of change of volume with respect to time is related to or equal to. Okay, what we have here is a constant times a product, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the pi, the constant, outside of a big bracket here so that I can focus my attention just on, kind of unclutter the problem, the product of these two variables. Okay, so remember in the product rule we consider this r squared, our f function, and h would be our g. So we have f and g. Okay, so let's apply the product rule. So it's, and remember it's all with respect to t, and t does not match up with either r or h, so that becomes important in um, uh, our use of the um, chain rule. So it's the first factor, r squared left alone, times the derivative of h with respect to time. So that's going to look like dh dt. Plus, the second factor left alone, h, times the derivative of r squared with respect to time. So the derivative of r squared would be 2r times the derivative of the inside function, the letter r, with respect to time. So what we see here is that the rate of change of volume with respect to time is actually related to um, the rate of change of the height of the cylinder and the radius of the cylinder as well. Okay, so if I were to do a little cleanup on this, maybe come up here. You might have more room underneath here than I do with this pen, so just feel free to write it underneath as opposed to what I'm doing. So dv dt equals, now if you want to go ahead and distribute the pi back into both terms, that's absolutely fine, but I think I'm just going to leave it factored out. And I just like the bracket as opposed to the, the parentheses, so I'm just going to return to the bracket. So um, not any cleanup here on the first term, r squared dh dt plus, now I can do a little cleanup here. Uh, common practice would have us just do, just do 2, 2 rh and then times your dr dt. Okay, so what I, I want you guys to see this as is this, that 
This is pi times. We do calculations in here and take our final answer and multiply by pi. Again, certainly it's okay to distribute the pi through, um, but um, I just think it just might be a little easier to manage this way. Okay. Now look at the structure inside here too. Uh, when we do go to calculate a value for dvdt, uh, if I know r, I can square it. I would have to be given some information about the rate of change of h with respect to time. So I might know what that value is to multiply by r, r squared. I'm also going to have to know r again and h, the height of the cone, and I'm also going to have to be given some information about the rate of change of the radius with respect to time so that I can insert all those values into the appropriate places and then do the calculations. Um, if they don't straight up give us the rate of change of the height uh, or the rate of change of the radius with respect to time, there's going to be a way for us to find it and we'll tackle that problem when we do get to those application problems. Um, so I'll see you in the next video because I want to do about two, three more on the back.